Hello, Squirrel Tribe 2.0. How is it going, my dudes? I've missed you immensely. It is, bro, it's Saturday. No, it's Friday. Yeah, it's Friday. Okay, it's Friday. It is July the 14th. Maybe it's the 13th. I'm pretty sure it's the 14th. I'm losing track of time while we travel. I'm losing track of time. Let me tell you where we are. Look, let me, let's get real close here. Let me show you where we are. I'm trying not to, sorry, I had to like ghetto rig this whole thing. But can you see that? That's what that's all about. That is the Canadian flag flying proudly and very flappily because it's very windy of our hotel here in Canada, in Saskatchewan, Canada. Moose Jaw to be exact. So listen, <laughs> y'all, uh, we're having a very good time on our vacation. We have seen a lot of different cities, met a lot of different people, seen some places we love, some places we're like, mm, I'm glad we visit visited here, but I don't really think we want to do this again. But what I saw today, y'all, what I saw today, two things. Number one, this little, I don't know if it's considered a city or a town. I don't really know how they phrase things in Canada. So for all of my Canadian peeps, my Canadian dudes, uh, hopefully I don't offend anybody with my lack of Canadian knowledge. Hopefully you understand everything I'm saying is coming from a place of loving this place so far. I don't love every place we've been in Canada. Um, there are parts where I've seen them like this reminds me of this spot in Georgia or this reminds me of this, this, and this. But Moose Jaw, <laughs> one, I love the names that you guys come up with for your cities. I'm just gonna put it out there like that. Moose Jaw, Regina, really? Regina? Look, <laughs> we stayed in Regina last night and I thought I was being funny when I kept saying Regina, like vagina, but Regina, you know, like my name is Michelle, like Rochelle, Rochelle, but Michelle, because that's how people do it all the time. So when I would say Regina, I thought I was being amusing. Now it sounds like I was being an ass because that's actually how they say it, which is also really freaking cool that your city is named Regina. <laughs> like vagina, but Regina, but with an R. I don't know why that amuses the absolute bejesus out of me, but it does. But listen, so we are in Moose Jaw. We came here for one specific reason, and that was to go to this Tunnels Al Capone tour thingy that um, a couple of people had mentioned in comments, whether it was on Kevin's channel, K-E-V-I-N, Kevin, all caps, whatever. How I don't know how he says it in his videos or over on Squirrel Tribe. Although most people on my main channel don't comment stuff like that. So it's probably on Squirrel Tribe Life. Anyway, somebody said we needed to do this Al Capone tunnel thing because it had roots with Chicago. We, y'all, when we got here, I had no idea that literally Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan, Canada had real honest to goodness freaking ties with Chicago, Illinois and Al Capone and Prohibition and all kinds of stuff. OMG. And I'm going to say this in every channel I've got and on the mans. And if I can get anybody in other channels to listen to me, I'm going to say, if you decide to leave the country and go on a vacation, please go to Moose, Moose Jaw, uh, Saskatchewan, Canada, because one, that tunnels thing, so incredibly worth it. I think it was, how much was it for us to go see this thing? I think per person, the kid was a little bit cheaper. I think she was like 18 Canadian dollars which is cheaper in American dollars. And I think we were 22 Canadian, so cheaper in American, whatever. And it's a 50 minute thing. Time flew by. I was like, y'all, you said 50. This felt like 14. Like it went by that fast, but it was so cool. And we learned so much. And they, they do say at the beginning, you know, no recording, no photography. Don't tell anybody what you saw. Don't whatever, like keep the, the intrigue there. So I can't tell you anything except to say the man and I were cracking up the whole time and I learned new stuff and the kid, although she does get anxiety like I do in, in darker places or smaller places, she still liked it too, but, it, but she stayed very close to me because it was, I can't tell you anything, but it's so freaking cool. You've got to do it. Anyway, after we got done with that, that's the one thing I want to tell you about was that, but after we got done with that, I realized something, not everybody should have children. And I've realized this numerous, numerous, numerous times throughout my life. But today my child realized some people should not have children and see what had happened was we got done at the tunnels place. Side note, you like my Bucky shirt? Where did I get this one? Hold on. Y'all, my hair is way too friggin' long. I don't know if it says what city this one's from. Did, yeah. Can y'all see that? Cause I can't see the back of me. So y'all, and I can't turn that much cause I put on too much weight and I can't twist. So um, hopefully it says what city. Cause I don't remember. I think this was Severeville, maybe Severeville, I don't know. So anyway, 
we get done with the tour and we decide we want to walk around Moose Jaw, okay? Because this place is literally like, uh, it's like a little old downtown kind of area where it's like a little grid of streets and you have small little um, brick front stores, brick and mortar, legit brick and mortar stores. And I hope you guys can hear me. My microphone's doing like really stupid things on the shirt today. Hopefully y'all can hear me okay. Um, we decided we wanted to walk around. So he, I, I needed a book. I finished my book, my Nora Roberts book yesterday, and I did not pack extra books with me. I, I don't know why. I know I'm a book nerd and I know I like to read and I thought one book was gonna get me through three weeks. Really? So I asked one of the tour guide tour guides at Tunnels if there was a bookstore. And he's like, oh, there's an antique bookstore, two roads up, hang a left, right? Um, and there's antique books. He goes, but I got all my Harry Potter books in there, so they have good stuff too. And I was like, okay, cool. So we were going to head that way. So we go that direction, and we run across a consignment store, like, you know, Goodwill type of thrift store kind of thing. But it was tiny, right? And I was like, you know what? Let's just go in here and look around. We haven't been in one here. I'm kind of curious what kind of stuff is in a consignment shop in, and this may sound stupid, in Canada versus the U.S., right? Like, I'm curious what people donate to these places and also what kind of monies they charge for these things versus at home, right? So we go in and it's your normal stuff. It's your clothes, your shoes, your old cups, um, dishes, hats, bras. Bras was weird. I was like, Somebody else's titties were in those and you're just sitting in a basket like like it's nothing. Huh. I didn't see any jock straps because I feel like that would be a whole different thing. Boobies is one thing. Ball walls, a little different. Mech. I don't think you should ever <laughs> buy a used jock strap. That just feels, I don't, anyway, anyway. So we go into this um, consignment store and there's people in there looking around, whatever else. And I find the books and I was like, I wonder if they have anything good. Bruh. I got three hardback John Grisham books and one more book that's not hardback. One of my absolute favorite movies in word form, like I'm going to read the book, even though I know the movie by heart, Where the Heart Is with Nova Lee, you know, the one who has the baby in the Walmart and then there's a tornado and it's got Stockard Channing in it who used to be Rizzo in Greece, which is one of my favorite movies. That's how I, Six Degrees of Bacon things, just so you know. Um, six Degrees of Kevin Bacon. So I get these books for 14 Canadian dollars, which again is like, I don't math in my head. I just guess like 1150. Sure. We'll go 1150 in American dollars. I got four books from the store. And then we decided that now I have books. Well, obviously we have to go get coffee at 2:30 in the afternoon, although none of us are sleepy, but there was this really cute coffee shop on the corner. Evolve. I think it's called Evolve. I don't know. So we go to the coffee shop. After we put the books in the car, the kid got one of her books. I got my book. The man got his uh, bag, his laptop and stuff because he's always editing things. And we go to this coffee shop. Cutest little coffee shop ever. Service everywhere we have been has been friggin' phenomenal. The people in Canada in general have been so incredibly nice. Like, like I feel like if you were going to get mugged in Canada, they would walk up to you and they'd be like, hey, listen, I really like it if you would give me all of your money. And you could say, yeah, I don't really want to. And I feel like they'd be like, okay, I understand. Have a good day. And then they'd leave and try to mug somebody else. Like that's how Canadians feel to me. I could be wrong. I have not met every Canadian, obviously. I feel like you have a better chance of getting mugged by a tourist in Canada than you do a Canadian though. Like that's how it feels. Anyway, so we get to the coffee place and we go inside and we pick our table and the kid and I go up to the counter and we order our drinks and take everything back. And because we were staying there, the man got his hot coffee in a regular mug, which always feels classier than getting like the to-go cups at like Starbucks and Dunkin' and donuts and stuff like that. So he gets his cup. I get an iced coffee, which is actually somewhere behind me on the table over here because I didn't finish it. It's back there. The kid got herself a salted caramel something frappuccino kind of thing. Hey, the lighting's doing weird things. Can y'all see like the dots? like a prism going across my face. Um, she got a salted caramel frappuccino thing and then I got water, whatever else. When we go sit down. Now the store, the coffee shop, it's not a store, right? Coffee shop. Let me see if I can give you more space here. So the coffee shop, I mean, it's a, it's a square and you have the front door here. Okay. And you walk in and you can go this way and there's all this seating over here. Okay. Or you can walk in and there's two little tables right here. Or you can, and when you walk in, you go straight ahead and here's the whole, all this right here behind these two front tables is the actual coffee making area. And they have sandwiches, they have pastries, they have whatever, they have the coffee and all that stuff. And then inside the square, 
once you walk in, you've got the coffee thing here. You can go down the hallway. There's the bathroom to the, to the left. And then to the right, they have like a built-in, excuse me, bookcase where they have books in there. And there's a sign that says, what goes better with coffee? What, what goes best with coffee? You got it, books. So they have a bunch of books and they're saying, you know, read a book when you're done, put it back tomorrow morning, come back for coffee, pick your book up, hit the next chapter, that kind of thing, right? And there's a bunch of people in there. When you first walk in, I look like a bunny rabbit, like I'm about to like, bounce. anyway. So when you first walk in, you can tell the coffee has done its job. Side note, I only drank half of the iced coffee and I'm like, Nyeh. so you walk in or you hop in if you're a little bunny, you go in and there's like two gentlemen sitting right here, older guys, mm, 60s, late 60s, sitting here. We went in and we went this way and there's a little table when you first walk in with a fan on it, like an old oscillating fan, right? So you have this table here with the fan and right next to the fan, you have the gray bin that you go put all your dirty dishes in, your cups, your plates, your whatnots. And then you have this little bar area where you can sit up higher and stare right out the window at people who can also stare at you as they walk by, make actual eye contact with people and just, you know, like that, that kind of thing. So we go over there and we take a corner table, okay? Our corner table, I have my back to, this is the shape of the place, I have my back to the outside, right? Like, whatever. The man has his back to the door and everything else, but you know, he's a man, he sits angled so he can still kind of see everything that's happening. And the kid sat next to me. Well, in front of me, there's a table with two gentlemen sitting at it and like a tall mirror right behind them. So they, the guy with his back to me could see if I was looking in their direction and then I could see if he was looking in our direction through the mirror. So we made eye contact twice by like weird little things, but it was one of those, sup, I wasn't looking at you. Our eyes just happened to land in this space at the same time, whatever. Um, so they're sitting there and then there's some couches right next to our, wait, where am I? In, over here. So there's some couches right here and there's an employees only section back there. But behind these two couches, there's a table Okay, I need you to understand there's a table behind these two couches. On these two couches, there's somebody on this couch with their back to me, somebody on that couch facing me, table in the middle with their stuff on it. Y'all, we have our coffee. We're sitting here having coffee, reading a book. The kid's showing me stuff on her phone. The man's talking to me about YouTube and whatnot. And I, I hear the door bell because they have a bell when you open the door, you know, how most doors do so they can, it can get your attention so you understand if somebody has come in or left. So the bell goes off and some people walk in, two older ladies walk in and they walk up to the counter. Then the bell goes off again and I did not see anybody come in. And the next thing I know, there's like a, I want to say three-year-old, between three and four. Again, I'm really bad with ages now that I'm out of the toddler age with my kid. Between three and four, a little boy, kind of sort of dirty, but not really, shorts and a tank top on. And the first thing he does is walk up to, when you first walk in, he immediately goes to the right to where that fan is and starts just jamming the little buttons on the fan. To which one of the ladies behind the counter said, honey, please don't mess with the fan, okay? You don't wanna knock it over or hurt yourself or anything like that. Kid, didn't listen whatsoever. I don't know, I don't know. I, at first I thought maybe the two older ladies had this kid with them, like it was one of their grandkids, but both of them turned to look at the kid and then turned back to what they were doing. And I was like, either he's not with them or they're really shitty grandparents. Well, he wasn't with them, so they are probably amazing grandparents. So, next thing I know, <laughs> y'all, you don't, the next thing I real, I, so I'm sitting there, and the kid and I are having a conversation, and the two gentlemen at this table right here, one has a hot drink, one has an iced coffee with a straw, maybe this much iced coffee left in his drink. This little child turns away from the fan, turns away from the fan and walks, over here, goes over to their table, stands there, looks at them both, reaches out, picks up Broski's iced uh, coffee and just starts drinking it. Now the guy facing me, he and I made eye contact and I was like, bro, I, I don't know. And he's like, what? The guy that the coffee belonged to, I couldn't see his face in the mirror because the other guy had moved so his head was blocking the reflection. But I'm sure the guy who owned the coffee was probably like, what do I do, what do, I do here? Like, I, what, they just let him take the drink and, and whatever. And then out of nowhere comes a mom. I'm assuming a mom because she looked like she may have been, I'm trying to figure out how to tone this. She looked like she may have been like Hawaiian, like she had that look to her. And the little boy looked like he was mixed with 
maybe black, maybe something else because just because of his hair texture, right? Not 100% sure, but he was a little bit darker than her and the hair texture. So I'm going to assume mixed with black, right? So she comes around the corner and she grabs him and she takes the drink out of his hands and puts it back down on their table and then turns and walks away with the kid. And my brain went, uh -huh, ma'am, you better be putting $4 down on that table too so this man can rebuy a drink. Like what? what uh, she did not say, I'm sorry. She did not say anything. She just, ha, 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 and picked up the kid, put the drink down and went back to go stand in line. And I was like, and the guy who was facing me looked at me and we were both like, the, what? Like, I was not sure what to do. I'm like, this, is, this has nothing to do with me. I'm just gonna sit here and watch what happens, right? So then a smaller kid comes flying around the corner in a onesie, dirtiest thing I've ever seen in my life. Not the kid, the onesie. The kid was probably dirty too, but a onesie. This kid may have been a year and a half. And the first thing he does is go running up towards the fan like the, the brother, I'm assuming the brother had done, and starts pushing the buttons, right? Well, then he gets distracted and starts just walking around. And I was like, if this child goes and picks up this iced coffee also and takes a sip, I'm going to lose it. But he didn't. He's walking around. And then he gets back over to where the entrance is, where the table is. And he's doing this. And he just walks and says, bam, right into the corner of this table. To which the two older gentlemen that were sitting at this table, I told you about in their 60s, uh, sitting at this table, they were getting up to go put their cups uh, and dishes into that little gray bin that was next to the fan. They're over walking over there. The kid smacks his head on the corner. One of the guys says, oh no, you know, you gotta watch out buddy, like watch where you're going. To which the kid turns around and just starts going, ah! cause you know how kids do, ah! they just stand there in their face and then whatever. The kid wouldn't have said any, or started crying if the gentleman hadn't noticed what he did, I think. Kids are reactionary. They don't know that they should cry or that something's wrong until an adult goes, oh no, are you okay? And then they're like, oh no. I think I'm supposed to cry now. That's how this works, right? So this kid starts crying. To which the woman who came around and got the three to four-year-old comes over and grabs this one, but leaves the three to four-year-old over in the line. So then as she's getting this one, the three to four-year-old starts coming around the backside this way and going to all the tables again. Here's the thing. She, she could not keep her hands on both kids to save their lives. And it felt very intentional. The man and I are sitting there looking at each other and he's like, something's not right here. And I'm like, I really fully agree with you. And it was just, she had a backpack with her and she took it to the table behind the two couches. Remember I mentioned there was two couches, table in the middle, lady with her back to me, lady here. So she takes the st her stuff to this table behind where the lady on the couch is sitting and puts her bag on the table. After she stood in line to get herself an iced coffee, okay, she didn't get anything for these kids that I saw, but then one of the, she pulls something out of the bag and the kid's like walking around like a piece of chocolate or something. And I'm like, this kid has dirty chocolate hands, dirty chocolate mouth. He's literally reaching out and touching everything. There's a lady next to the table with the two guys. There's a table with two women with their backs to me and a gentleman across and them facing me. And the lady that is sitting on the far right, she has a tan sweater hanging on the back of her chair. And my brain kept going, no, 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 no. He's going to go touch that sweater. He's going to go touch that sweater. She's not going to notice it. And the next time she puts it on, somebody's going to be like, ma'am, you have doo-doo on your sweater because they're not going to know it's chocolate. They're going to think that wherever he touched, which is probably the part of the sweater that touches the back of her butt, they're going to be like, ma'am, whatever you have done has gone through your pants and hit your sweater. You have doo-doo on your sweater. Thankfully, though, the sweater fell to the ground. Yes, thankfully, the sweater fell to the ground. Therefore, the child could not touch it, did not touch it, just walked right past it. If it had been on the chair, this would have happened. Those little doo-doo chocolate covered hands would have hit that sweater. So the lady realizes it falls. She turns around, picks it up, puts it in her lap instead of on the, cha on the chair. And I'm like, yes, she has no idea what's happening with this child behind her. But I was like, yes, that's cool. So the mom is sitting at the table with her backpack and she's taking all these things out and handing it to one kid, letting the other one run wild. Then the three-year-old, three to four-year-old knocks over a chair with loud bang. So everybody's looking. Then the little one just starts crying. And the whole time mom's like, ha, ha, ha. And I'm like, is she on drugs? Like, is there, is there something wrong with her? Like, what are we doing here? Right? So then after nobody paid her any attention, see here, let me move closer for this. Here's the thing. Nobody paid her any attention. I made eye contact with her twice and just did that mm, smile that, that, you know, I'm a mom, I understand, it's fine. No, don't worry about it, yeah, it's cool. That smile that you do that says, hey, listen, your kids are running amok, but it's, 
Yeah, I've noticed it, but I'm not going to judge you for it because maybe there's something going on. That was the smile I gave her. Not that, you know, shit-eating grin one, but that like, hi, how are you? You know, I don't know how to redo it, but y'all know what I'm talking about. So she decides that it's time to leave the coffee shop, okay? This is about the same time my child decides that she's tired of sitting at the table with us. She wants to get up to that little, remember I told you that when you come in, go to the right, there's the fan and the thing, and then there's like the bench seating up at the window so you can see out. She decided she wanted to move from our table to there to the very end and sit there and draw and watch people. So this lady decides she's going to leave with these kids that do look like her. I need to point that out. They do look like her, but it still felt weird what was happening in there. The fact that she could not hold on to both of them, it's not that difficult. For those of you who have two kids, you also have two hands. Y'all understand that holding on to your children in public places is kind of important. <laughs> um, so you've mastered how to do this. She's had one for at least three to four years and the other one for at least a year and a half. I feel like by now she should have mastered how to not let one run away. You hold one on your hip and you hold one in your hand. And hell, if you need to, you hold them both on your hips. Moms have mom hips for a reason, okay? It's to hold them little suckers in place. So she decides it's time to leave. She puts her backpack on. She pulls her phone out. No, 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 no. the phone was later. She puts her backpack on. She's holding the hand of the itty bitty one, the one and a half year old, the three to four year old. She's just like willy nilly letting him run around. She goes to the front door, opens the door. Both the children go out the door and then she closes the door and decides that she really needs to pay attention to something that's happening right here next to the door. You know what was happening next to the door? Not a damn thing. I'm, I'm sitting there going, what are, you, what are you doing? There's a road literally right there. Like from me to you is the door to the road. It is right there. And she's decided she's going to let this one and a half year old who can't keep his hands to himself and this three and four year old who can't keep his hands, hands to himself, who don't know how to sit still, who are running all over the place. She's going to let them out of the coffee shop onto the side of the street where the cars are by themselves while she dicks around looking at something over here. It's a chair and a table. Why does this have your attention? Why did you let them out and close the door and whatever? Bruh, when I tell you, I had started to stand up at exact, the exact same time she decided to open the door to go out with them. Cause I was like, not, that, not on my watch. Like I will go out there and watch your kids if you can't figure out how to do it, right? So she goes outside, y'all. And I sound like a Karen in this video. I don't care, horrible parenting. So she, decides, she goes outside with them and the doors are right here. She sits right here. The kids stand right here, de blocking the door. Nobody can go in, nobody can go out. She sits down, she pulls out her phone and starts doing this. This, you know what's happening when you're doing this? You can't see what's happening out here. So the little one, the one and a half year old says Pew! and darts off towards the end of the street. And me in my little corner right here and the kid in her corner right here, see at the exact same time this child go flying by towards the intersection. At the same time, some good hearted man sees him and runs out into the intersection to stop any cars from coming and push the kid back to then the mom walk up and go ha, 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 and pick up the kid and rub him, you know, do this little thing and the little raspberries and whatever. Are you effing kidding me? Listen, listen. The best time to teach a child that they've done something wrong is when they have done something wrong. So when your child takes off and runs towards an intersection, you don't pick them up and play around and give them little baby raspberries. You don't do that shit again. That's what you do. Okay. You teach them early. Don't be stupid. But here's the problem. Nobody taught mom not to be stupid because mom decided to play in her phone and let little junior run towards the street. Do you know how many times she let that happen? Five, five times, five times that little kid took off running. And every time that kid took off running, it took her a couple seconds to go after him. And when she went after him, she left the three to four year old by himself who could have then gone this way into traffic. Bruh, when I tell you, I was like, no, I don't know what's happening here. I have massive issues with what's like, but then there's that thing of, can, can I say, like, is that how things are done in Canada? Like, I don't know. So it's not like I could be like, excuse me, ma'am, I'm going to need you to stop whatever it is you're doing and figure out how to do things better. Like, cause then they're going to look at me like, ew, who are you American? And I'm going to be like, 
somebody whose kids doesn't run out into traffic? Like, I don't know what to tell you. My kid did it one time at Publix when she was like four, and I about yanked her bald to get her back in place. I, the only thing I could reach was her hair, and that's what I yanked her back by. Guess what she never did again? Ran out into traffic, so there's that. I don't understand what was happening, but the man and I both decided nefarious. That's what I decided. I'm not gonna lie, nefarious. So we sat there for a good 20 minutes more, just paying attention, because I, I told him, I said, listen, with the way things are going, in all these different countries, with missing children, with traffic children, and all this other stuff. These children look like her, but they're not listening to her. They're not paying any attention to her. They're not reaching for her, which to me says maybe not the mom, not the mama, right? So then I'm like, if she was the mom, don't you think she'd be paying more attention and be more concerned if children are running off? And then I'm like, is she waiting for somebody to grab one? Like, is she hoping? Somebody just picks up her kid and runs or is like, hey, listen, since you can't take care of him, here's a check and I'll take like I could not figure out what was happening. And we decided that it was time to go. Right. We needed to go because they were going to close soon and we needed to check into the hotel. So we go to get our stuff. And by the time I turn back around to put my cups into the, the gray bin next to the fan, the lady and the kids were gone. Lady and the kids were gone. And our drive from from the, the coffee place to the hotel, I was like, I don't see them anywhere. Guess what it's going to do for the rest of probably my life? Bug the crap out of me. Bug the absolute crap out of me. So, the, I don't know if it's bad parenting or if it's something more and that's going to bother me, but from the looks of it in the beginning, from everything, bad parenting, of course, the more I sit here and play the what-if game in my brain, the more I'm like, nope, nefarious. It might not have been because, again, these children look like her. That's all I got for that. So, that's that. Now, side note. I really do like Canada so far. I really miss home. I didn't think I would miss my couch in bed as much as I do, but I really do miss it. Um, but not enough to go back immediately. There's still so many things that we want to see, so many things we want to do. We plan on heading to Alberta, Canada um, tomorrow, I think. Uh, and then we want to go to Glacier National Forest. I think it's National Forest. Then we're probably going to hit up some, some because uh, that's in Montana. Then I think we're going to hit up Utah and try to Airbnb some stuff there. Um, and then I don't really know what's after that because y'all, we're seat of our pants. That's what we're doing. But it's been fun so far. The man, the kid, and I are having a blast tonight. The plan is to chill, not really do anything, maybe walk around and see some places. Most of the places in this little area look like they close pretty early, you know, like the little downtown spots look like they close pretty early. So the plan is to get to be in here and just chill. We've got this fun couch. We'll sit and watch a movie or something. We'll eat dinner somewhere or they actually have room service here. We might do that. And then uh, watch a movie and get some sleep and just just hang out. I didn't want the man to have to drive today. He's been driving four to six hours like almost every day. And this way he gets a little break. Uh, he would normally let me drive and I would normally drive, but the tires are getting a hint low in the back so he's like mm, no i'll drive just in case anything whatever's probably gotta get some tires as soon as we get back over the border into the states head up a discount tire if we can get some new tires get a balance and alignment on the car also because the roads in canada <laughs> they're real bumpy y'all they're real bumpy and uh the the car does not like real bumpy like that so we'll have to get that work done listen I love you all immensely. We will be having Mimosa Monday on Monday. I don't know where it's going to be from, but it's going to be fun wherever it's from. I hope y'all are having a fabulous week. I hope you have a fabulous weekend. I probably won't see you before Monday. Um, make sure you're checking out Squirrel Tribe Life. We have so far, we have our, our visit to, did we do something? We did a live stream in Atlanta, but that's here on 2.0 Mimosa Monday. So I think we've got Nashville up from when we were in Nashville. We have St. Louis up. Oh, we have Nashville, we have Pigeon Forge, we have St. Louis, we have Chicago up, and I think we just put up the first part of um, Bloomington, uh, Minnesota, uh, Mall of America. That just went up on Squirrel Tribe Life, so if you guys are interested in seeing any of those places, go check it out. If not, no harm, no foul. I love you all immensely anyways, and I will see you again on Monday. My dudes, I'm going to go enjoy this uh, Canadian weather. It's actually really perfect temperature out and kind of windy so that's lovely but i'm gonna go hang out with my family some more surprisingly we're not sick of each other so fingers crossed it stays that way right love y'all bye